welcome we will be discussing imaging in glaucoma in two sessions in this session we will be discussing anterior segment imaging and in the next session we will take a posterior segment imaging in glaucoma anterior segment imaging devices allow structural assessment of the anterior chamber angle contour of the iris ciliary body and corneal endothelium and the anterior segment imaging techniques we are going to discuss include ultrasound biomicroscopy, anterior segment OCT, specular microscopy and pachymetry. So whereas visual field testing allows functional assessment of a glaucoma patient or glaucoma suspect, imaging devices allow structural assessment of various ocular structures in a glaucoma patient or a glaucoma suspect. In ultrasound biomicroscopy, a 50 MHz transducer is present in the probe and during examination, the probe is immersed in water bath as shown here in this photograph or is covered in a fluid field disposable probe cover and the probe is kept over but not in contact with the cornea. In contrast, conventional ophthalmic ultrasound is performed with a 10 MHz transducer in the probe and during examination, the probe is kept in contact with the closed eyelids with a jelly for coupling. So during UBM, the eyelids are open, the probe does not contact the cornea and water is used as a coupling medium between the probe and the cornea. And during conventional ophthalmic ultrasound, the eyelids are closed, the probe is in contact with the closed eyelid and a jelly is used for coupling the probe and the eyelid. Also we note that in UBM, the frequency of the transducer is 50 MHz, 5 times that of the transducer in conventional ophthalmic ultrasound and this higher frequency results in better resolution of anterior segment structures while limiting penetration of the ultrasound waves inside the eye resulting in the ability of ultrasound biomicroscopy to image only the anterior 5 mm of the globe. So the higher frequency permits better resolution but limits penetration of the ultrasound waves. Whereas the lower 10 MHz frequency of the transducer in conventional ophthalmic ultrasound allows imaging of the posterior segment of the eye up to the anterior portion of the orbit albeit at a lower resolution. Since ultrasound uses sound waves to image and sound waves can penetrate opaque structures which light cannot penetrate, UBM can be used to assess anterior chamber structures which are not visible on slit lamp, conioscopy or OCT or are obscured by corneal opacity. Structures which can be imaged and detected with the UBM include iris, ciliary body and anterior chamber angle, their configuration and tumors arising from these structures, implants such as drainage device tubes and stents, intraocular lens haptics, retained lens material and intraocular foreign body. Implants such as drainage device tubes and stents, intraocular lens haptics, retained lens material and intraocular foreign body. These two photographs show UBM images of the anterior chamber angle and in this photograph we find a thickened iris which is prone to cause angle closure. In this photograph we find anterior bowing of the peripheral iris also known as iris bombe. These two photographs represent plateau iris and in plateau iris we find a plateau like configuration of the iris with an angulation in its periphery with the remainder of the iris being flat. We will be discussing plateau iris further in the session on angle closure glaucoma. Assessment of the anterior chamber angle on ultrasound biomicroscopy begins with identification of the scleral spur. This identification of scleral spur is subjective and is operator dependent. And the scleral spur is located on the sclera adjacent to the anterior extent of the ciliary body. Following identification of scleral spur, parameters which can be determined on UBM include anterior chamber depth, crowding in the anterior chamber angle, iris contour and thickness of peripheral iris, size, position and degree of rotation of ciliary body, lens thickness and vaulting of the lens. So these are the normal orientation of ciliary body and here we see anterior rotation of the ciliary body and UBM allows dynamic testing by dimming room illumination which limits light entry into the contralateral eye thus causing pupillary dilatation and narrowing of the angle. 
and UBM should always be considered as complementary to gonioscopy. Anterior segment optical coherence tomography or ASOCT allows high resolution imaging of the anterior chamber and angle. OCT devices which are used exclusively for anterior segment imaging use light of wavelength 1310 nanometer as compared to 820 to 870 nanometer light used in posterior segment OCT devices. And this 1310 nanometer light allows better penetration through the sclera and better imaging of the anterior chamber angle. But combined anterior and posterior segment OCT devices use 820 to 870 nanometer light for anterior segment imaging with poorer resolution of the anterior chamber angle. These two photographs show AS OCT images and in this photograph we see the poor resolution of the anterior chamber angle in a combined posterior and anterior segment OCT device. In this photograph, the location of Schwalbe's line is labeled where the cornea meets with the sclera representing the posterior extent of the decimates membrane. The location of the scleral spur is also labeled which lies adjacent to the anterior most extent of the ciliary body and the trabecular meshwork as we know lies between the Schwalbe's line and the scleral spur. And in this photograph, the Schlem's canal and the collector channels have also been imaged. It is important to understand the similarities and differences between gonioscopy, UBM and ASOCT for assessing the anterior chamber angle. Unlike gonioscopy, UBM and ASOCT do not allow reliable identification of angle landmarks such as scleral spur and also cannot differentiate between appositional and synechial angle closure which gonioscopy can. On the other hand, UBM and ASOCT allows angle assessment in the absence of visible light thus avoiding light induced meiosis which may widen the anterior chamber angle opening which gonioscopy cannot. Unlike UBM which uses sound waves which can penetrate opaque structures, ASOCT uses light waves which cannot penetrate opaque structures. So unlike UBM, ASOCT cannot image ciliary body, ciliary sulcus and portion of the crystalline lens behind the iris and ASOCT also cannot image in the presence of corneal opacity which UBM can. ASOCT is a non-contact procedure while UBM is not because the water bath contacts the eye and ASOCT is relatively operator independent and less time consuming. Several quantitative parameters can be measured with either UBM and or ASOCT and they include angle opening distance or AOD which are represented by these blue lines and which is the distance from the cornea to the iris along a line perpendicular to the cornea at a specific distance from the scleral spur with the specific distance being either 250 microns, 500 microns or 750 microns. The angle recess area or ARA is the cross-sectional area lying between the AOD line either AOD 500 or AOD 750, the inner corneoscleral wall and the anterior surface of the iris. The trabecular iris space area or TISA is the cross-sectional area lying between the AOD 500 line, the inner corneoscleral wall, the anterior surface of the iris and a line from the scleral spur to the iris perpendicular to the sclera. Iris thickness or IT is the length of a line from the anterior surface of the iris to the posterior surface of the iris perpendicular to the anterior surface of the iris from a point on the anterior surface of the iris which intersects with a circle centered on the scleral spur having a radius of either 750 microns or 2000 microns and ITM is the maximal thickness of the iris along its entire cross section. Anterior chamber depth or ACD is the actual distance from the inner surface of the cornea to the anterior surface of the lens. Parameters which can be measured by ASOCT are as follows. Iris curvature is the length of this line which extends perpendicular from another line joining the most central and the most peripheral portions of the posterior iris to a point on the posterior surface of the iris where the iris is maximally convex anteriorly. 
and iris area is the cross sectional area of the entire iris from the scleral spur to the pupillary margin iris volume is an estimate of volume of the entire iris calculated from eight partial volumes of iris along four OCT cross sections at 45 degree intervals lens vault is the length of the perpendicular from the anterior pole of the lens to a line joining the two scleral spur locations on an AS OCT cross section. Anterior vault is the distance along this perpendicular from this point to the inner surface of the cornea and anterior chamber depth is the difference between the anterior vault and the lens vault and so is the distance along this perpendicular from the anterior pole of the lens to the inner surface of the cornea. The anterior chamber width or ACW is the length of the line joining the two scleral spur locations on an AS OCT scan. Anterior chamber area or ACA is the area bounded by the inner corneoscleral surface, the anterior surface of the iris and the anterior surface of the crystalline lens within the pupil. Anterior chamber volume is an estimate of the volume of the entire anterior chamber and this is calculated from 24 partial volumes of the anterior chamber along 12 OCT cross sections at intervals of 15 degrees. Parameters which can be assessed in the UBM is the trabecular ciliary process distance or TCPD which is the distance of the trabecular meshwork at a location 500 micron anterior to the scleral spur from the ciliary process and this can be measured only in the UVM because ciliary process cannot be imaged by OCT as it lies behind the iris. Specular microscopy is used for imaging the corneal endothelium and uses of specular microscopy in glaucoma include diagnosis of corneal endothelial disorders associated with glaucoma such as posterior polymorphous dystrophy and iridocorneal endothelial syndrome. This photograph shows a specular photomicrograph of normal corneal endothelium. These two specular photomicrographs show the appearance of the corneal endothelium in posterior polymorphous dystrophy, which have vesicles and bands in the corneal endothelium visible clinically on the slit lamp. And this specular photomicrograph shows the appearance of the corneal endothelium in iridocorneal endothelial syndrome in which we get a reversal of the light dark pattern. We will be discussing further about posterior polymorphous dystrophy and iridocorneal endothelial syndrome both in this section of glaucoma and later on in the section on cornea. Another use of specular microscopy in glaucoma is to monitor endothelial cell count in patients who have undergone surgery with aqueous drainage devices such as shunts and MIGS stents because these patients are known to have a decline in their endothelial cell density following surgery. Pachymetry is the measurement of corneal thickness and average central corneal thickness in normal population has been determined to be 536 micron with a standard deviation of 31 micron and racial variation as well as high heritability of central corneal thickness has been demonstrated. Purpose of measuring central corneal thickness in glaucoma is twofold. Variation of central corneal thickness leads to error in measurement of intraocular pressure with the Goldman applanation tonometer. And a thinner cornea is considered as an independent risk factor for development of glaucoma, particularly in ocular hypertensives. As we have discussed in the session on intraocular pressure, a thinner cornea leads to underestimation of IOP recording with Goldman applanation tonometer and a thicker cornea leads to overestimation of IOP recording. Goldman applanation tonometer is calibrated for a CCT of 530 microns. This means that with a CCT of 530 microns, the recording of intraocular pressure by the Goldman applanation tonometer is accurate and this 530 micron value is close to the 536 micron value which is the normal average central corneal thickness in the population. No universally accepted correction formula exists to correct the IOP recording error due to variations in the central corneal thickness. 
and when entering the intraocular pressure data in the medical record of the patient, we should ideally mention the uncorrected intraocular pressure. The device used to measure the intraocular pressure, most commonly the Goldman applanation tonometer and central corneal thickness as recorded with pachymetry. Pachymetry can be done with various devices. Previously, optical pachymeter was available which came as a slit lamp attachment but it was found to be imprecise and is rarely used nowadays. Ultrasound pachymeter as shown in this photograph is one of the common devices used to measure the central corneal thickness. While doing ultrasound pachymetry, the tip of the probe must be oriented perpendicular to the cornea. Central corneal thickness measurement can also be done with corneal tomography devices such as the OBSCAN and PENTACAM and with the devices we have discussed in this session namely the anterior segment OCT, ultrasound biomicroscope and specular microscope. To recap the salient points, ultrasound biomicroscopy and anterior segment optical coherence tomography are useful to analyze the structure of the anterior chamber angle but should be considered as complementary to gonioscopy. Ultrasound biomicroscopy is a contact procedure which allows imaging of the anterior segment up to the ciliary body and can image through an opaque cornea. ASOCT is a non-contact procedure which allows imaging up to the iris and cannot image through an opaque cornea. Unlike gonioscopy, UBM and ASOCT do not allow differentiation between appositional and synechial angle closure and localization of scleral spur on these imaging devices is not highly accurate because it is subjective and operator dependent. ASOCT and UBM can measure certain quantitative parameters but many of these are dependent on proper identification of the scleral spur by the operator. Uses of specular microscopy and glaucoma include detection of associated corneal endothelial conditions such as posterior polymorphous dystrophy and iridocorneal endothelial syndrome and also for monitoring endothelial cell loss following surgical implantation of glaucoma shunts and stents. Pachymetry to determine central corneal thickness is important in glaucoma as CCT influences accuracy of IOP measurement by Goldman applanation tonometry and low CCT is considered to be an independent risk factor for glaucoma. Thank you for listening.